Hey guys, Joe DeMarco from the Crazy New York Driver Show for Friday, November the 30th, 2018. Welcome to another eBay video. Yes, I got forced inside again this week. It is cold, cloudy, and more importantly, windy out. And filming a video outside with the wind would totally mess up the microphone on my camcorder. So you got me inside again today. We have not had a single sunny day since last Friday. It's pathetic. And it's going to rain Saturday afternoon, Saturday night, into Sunday. It's been a very rainy week once again. We here in the Northeast can claim the worst weather in the United States. That being said, today we're going to talk about certain eBay topics, including Cyber Monday. Was it a boom or was it a bust for you? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about eBay targeting certain ages and their advertisements. We're going to talk about your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. And I think I have got a lot of good material to share with you guys today. So let's get started. Before we get started with your questions from the video, I'm going to break tradition and read an email comment that was sent to me. I don't usually read comments directly from my Mac, but I forgot to print this one out, and it's very important, and I think you guys will all learn something from this. Hi, Joe. I sure jinx myself at Thanksgiving. A friend asked me if I get many returns on eBay, and I told her, no, I do not get many. I normally get a return every few months. Then I doubled down on the jinx and sent out a bulk feedback on Saturday morning. I just got three returns. Two of the returns, the buyers are paying return shipping, and the other one, I'm paying the return. It was a small item that had free shipping on it. All three returns were from the people that did not read the listing. I should have taken your advice on bulk feedback. Thanks for the weekly videos. They've been a big help with my eBay business, David. Guys, please don't make the mistake David made. I told you guys months ago I stopped leaving bulk feedback because I honestly will tell you that I think it causes more returns. It basically jogs people's mind, in my opinion, and it causes more returns. David will now agree with me. So please, guys, you do what works for you, all right? But in the early days of eBay, I would leave feedback a week or two after a buyer paid. I would send out bulk feedbacks, and as soon as I did, the returns would come crashing in. So I don't do that anymore. And while I still get returns, I don't get anywhere near as many as I used to get. This week, I only had one return. It was a legit return from a person who bought the wrong alloy wheel center cap. They're paying to send it back. No issues with that. Let's talk about your comments, questions, and concerns from last week's video. On returns, Sylvester Vanderly wrote, I just had a return for an item that was sold as for parts or not working. The buyer got the item and said it didn't work and he wanted his money back. Did I miss something here that said this was a working item? The item used is over $360 and he paid $45 for this item that was sold for parts or not working. If the item was working, don't you think it would sell for a lot more over $300 and not for $45? Yes, eBay will have to add more languages for those who can't read and understand English. This is an important point because Sylvester sold this item for parts not working. And he basically laid it right out there. Parts are not working. The customer bought the item and said, it's not working. And yet, yet, I'm imagining that Sylvester has to pay return shipping which is wrong in my opinion. If it's sold for parts are not working and the person is agreeing that it's for parts and not working, that should not be an item not as described case. No way, no how. On free returns, Francis Denise Kovacs wrote, 
Did anyone on Joe's YouTube get the survey specifically addressing free returns, snag cases, and legit returns? Before eBay's new return policies, I had a few fraudulent buyers try and scam me on high-end collectibles. I list, but eBay stepped in and settled the case in my favor, along with PayPal if the scammer tried to go through them. Since this automatic return nonsense, I had my first buyer to send me a bunch of trash back and keep the high-end collectible. It was and is very discouraging. I will say in eBay's defense, after numerous contacts, eBay did reimburse me three times the amount I was scammed in eBay bucks to cover phone time and the such. In addition, I've had many messages from eBay buyers stating that they were going to buy the items and file a case to resolve it for free. There is no way to report the person, so you have to call them and spend unnecessary phone time reporting the message. With the survey I received, it has given me a glimmer of hope that eBay may be rethinking this ridiculous return thing. Thank you, Joe, for all the helpful information you give to have a successful eBay business. Okay, what Francis Denise Kovacs said. Did any of you guys get the survey she's referring to? If so, please comment that in the comment section below and tell us a little bit about it. I did not get that survey, and this is actually the first I'm hearing about it. <clears throat> On eBay Concierge, Verona wrote, we are very disappointed with eBay Concierge service. We have a problem with our two stores, a rare glitch affecting our listings, and no one seems able to fix it. We've called eight times, if not more, and they're not even willing to transfer our case to a technical team who will study it and try and solve it. No one has a solution for our problem, and we're being charged same fees as anyone else who has a good working store. We are losing sales with this glitch. What should we do at this point? My husband is a disabled vet, working very hard for his eBay business. We don't deserve to be treated like this. How do we escalate this case? Do they even care? Can you please guide us? I am shocked that eBay Concierge has not addressed your problem. Again, I don't know much about this problem other than what I'm reading. But what you need to do right now is contact eBay for Business through Facebook. I'm sure you have Facebook. Just contact eBay for Business, explain your problem briefly and succinctly, and be sure to include the name of your eBay store so they can get working on it. Okay? It's very important. Like you said, you're paying each month to have your eBay store in action, and if it's not in action, that's just plain wrong, and that should be corrected. Here's a real funny story from somebody named Hungry Man. You would not believe what happened to me. I had a lowball offer of $1 on a $40 item with free shipping, where only the shipping cost was about $10. As a, I, as usual, went to decline it, but I had just woken up and was having my morning tea and I mistakenly hit accept instead of decline. But I was so lucky that the buyer never even paid the $1 with free shipping. These buyers are just not serious. The important part there is this man had an item that he mistakenly accepted an offer of $1 with free shipping, okay, through the best offer feature. And can you believe the buyer never paid? That is just disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. What does that tell you guys? Tells, it tells me what I've been telling you guys for years. I do not use best offer because immediate payment is not required. Fitchy buyers can easily throw you any amount, get the item, and not pay you. Now, in this case, this is highly unusual that somebody would get the item for a dollar and still not pay. That has to be probably the stupidest buyer in creation. He should have paid the dollar, gotten the item, and flipped it or used it, whatever it was. That is just plain insane and it goes to reinforce the fact that eBay needs to require immediate payment or at least offer immediate payment 
on the best offer option. And while we're on that subject, I'm going to leak out some good news to you guys. Let me make sure nobody's looking. I have been told that this summer eBay will be rolling out a feature whereas best offer option will be able to accept immediate payment. That would be a big win for every seller on eBay. A big win. It hasn't happened yet. I've been told this summer. Let's hang in there and let's see what happens. On lowball offers, Kilo1212 wrote, Joe, don't complain. It was 12 degrees with feelings of minus four by me. This week I was ready to quit. It's amazing how much abuse eBay sellers have to take. Got a lowball offer on my item and I nicely refused. The next thing I know, the buyer threatens me with filing the police report because I stole the item. And I have all the invoices. I could not believe my eyes. I was called all sorts of names. Thief being the nicest one. This is just one example. I reported him to eBay. With promoted listings, I have to manually end them. Two months ago, all my campaigns were gone. eBay claimed it was a glitch. Okay, let's touch on his topic. Abusive contact through the eBay contact system. That is something that's probably happened to many of you guys. It's happened to me. It doesn't happen to me a lot, thankfully, but it has happened to me where fitchy buyers will become threatening. I remember one case years ago, and I mean years ago, during the early days of eBay, a guy threatened me. He threatened to do me bodily harm. And I reported that to eBay, and they sent him a warning letter. In other words, stop your crap, we're going to kick you off. Do you know that guy came at me again even harder, and I had to call eBay again and dime him out for his abusiveness. So guys, always be careful with that kind of thing. If somebody threatens you in any way, like in the case I described or the case I read, you need to contact eBay. They will back you up. Now, before I read any more comments, and I do have more to read, I'm going to take a drink from the Fox News Cup O-Life. This is the Fox News Cup O-Life. Happy is he who drinks from it. Most impressive. <laughs> On sales, 5797029, Mike wrote, Joe, fourth quarter sales on eBay have been soft for us the past couple of years. Going into Black Friday, all the news coverage was focused on Amazon and Walmart. I believe this free advertising hurts eBay. For the past week, I've been seeing on television and YouTube and also hearing on the radio the Amazon Can You Feel It ad campaign. It seems to be everywhere right now. I've also seen some Macari and Poshmark ads. With eBay, I'm hearing crickets. I did a little research and found some recent eBay ads on YouTube. They appear to be geared toward a younger audience. These ads didn't catch my attention. Has anyone seen a real eBay ad recently? Many of us also sell items that are suitable to gift giving, but buyer's attention is being diverted to Amazon with this upbeat ad campaign. Mike. Okay, let's talk about that. I'm not a big TV watcher myself, so I really haven't noticed many ads, but I have seen a couple of eBay ads. And I can tell you guys for a fact, for a fact, eBay is big on targeting millennials. You guys know that I have my ear to the grapevine with all eBay news, and as soon as something breaks or is going to break, I hear about it. Well, that's something you can take to the bank. I know for a fact that eBay is targeting millennials in these ads. eBay seems to feel that millennials have all this buying power and they're loaded with money and they are the generation to target. I want to ask you guys a question. What age groups or what age group do you think buys the most from you in your eBay store? And I'm going to give you some choices now and I definitely want to hear from all of you in the comment section below. Okay, group number one will be teens 17 and under. 
Group number two will be your millennials, ages approximately 18 to 35. The next group will be your middle-aged people, what I call middle-aged people, 35 to 65, and the last group will be over 65. Personally, I think, in my opinion, the middle-aged people are the best. That would be your 35 to 65 group. All the people I sell to here, locally, are the middle-aged group. I would no, actually, you know what? I would say 80% are the 35 to 65 group, with most of the remainder here, locally, being over 65. I get a lot of old people coming in here. It's not unusual for me to have customers in their 90s. 90s still driving. Now I do realize that a person that's 90 years old is not going to be on eBay, I get that. But people 35 to 65 are going to be on eBay and those are the cats that I think should be targeted. Millennials, I mean, okay, they do buy certain things. They buy video games, anything that has to do with fun and enjoyment. If you're selling things that have to do with fun and enjoyment, yes, you would want millennials because those are the people that are going to buy from you. But if you're selling on eBay Motors, millennials will not buy from you in my opinion. Now why not? Every one of them drives a car, that's true. But when something happens to their car, they tend to be the generation not to address it. I found this out in real life in person. People 18, 25, they never come in here. If they need a hub or if they need anything for their car, they'll tell their parents, I need this, go get it for me. And their parents will do it. They will go out and make the purchase, which is why I really, really beseech eBay to target the 35 to 65 year olds because those are the ones, in my opinion, that are spending money. That's the way I found it to be in my eBay store and locally here. So I ask you guys, please, every one of you comment in your eBay store what you feel the age group is that buys the most from you. I want to hear it. I really do. And if you don't mind saying basically what you sell, you don't have to say the exact thing. You, for those of you who, who do like millennial sales and think that the millennials buy a lot from you, you might say something like, I think most of my sales are to millennials and I sell video games. Something like that. Next comment is from Stephen Bond. Another great video, Joe. I agree with you on the shirt, lady. Strangely, as many best offers I have been getting, I have never run into the what is the lowest you will take line. Well, Stephen, the reason you haven't run into that is because they're all coming to me. I get that like crazy. Betty A wrote, can't remember when I've seen blue skies in your background. I thought they were permanently painted gray. It looks great. Thanks for the info. They've been gray straight through since last week, Betty, and there's no end in sight. Skinny Cow came up with a good comment. Cheap items attract cheap people. Conversely, John Hodgkins said, gotta disagree with you about cheap items. Anything under $20, I've been selling on eBay for 15 years and for all that time, my average selling price has been about $12. Never had a major problem, just a few returns here and there like anyone. You can't make a blanket statement like that. All right. You just heard two different people with two different opinions, and that's fine. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But like Skinny Cow said, I mean this. I feel that the cheapest items cause the most problems. So again, if you guys want to weigh in, all right? On one side, you got me and you got Skinny Cow saying cheapest items cause the most problems. On the other side is John. He says, no, he's been doing great selling things for $12. His average selling price is $12 and he's doing great. And I say, God bless you, sir. I'm not knocking you in any way. If it works for you, you stick with it. But I am very curious about the rest of you guys. What is your average selling price, if you don't mind saying? Mine usually runs around 
$30 to $50 approximately. Some are a little less, some are more. So yeah, on the eBay Always Open materials, Felix Bewer wrote, I also received my eBay Always Open stuff, but I don't think the postcards are effective because the QR code does not go to my store. That is very true. The QR codes just go to the eBay site, ebay.com site. It would have been great, absolutely great, if they went to our respective stores, but I think the cost of doing that would have been astronomical. Also on the same topic, Helen Gerhardt wrote, Joe, great video. Now that you're in the Always Open program, have you added local pickup to your listings? My guess is that your local customers won't want to pay for shipping. Absolutely freaking not. You will never see local pickup available on my listings. If a local customer sees my listing and wants to come here and pick it up, well, that's fine. I have no problem with that. But if he's buying it on eBay, it's going to be shipped on eBay. And with a tracking number that's uploaded by Joey. Because years ago, Joey got stung twice in one month, and that will never, ever happen again. A blast from the past wrote, Hey Joe, just curious. Has any of your neighbors ever asked you why you appear to be standing on your porch talking to yourself every Friday? I can just picture someone looking out their window and not being able to see your camera. Not really, no, because most people are at work when I'm filming the video. The only time people seem to give me a double take is when they're walking by in the street behind me. Sometimes I get funny looks. Some of you guys have probably seen that in the past. Believe it or not, I get more funny looks right here because although you can't see it right now, the sidewalk is right here. So people are walking by while I'm doing this, reading these things at the camera, and they're looking at me like, what is that guy doing? So I hope that answers your question. The last comment I'm going to read is from Will Horton. I think you should do two videos a week because we all love you and you're cool and nice to have as an eBay friend and advice to many thanks. Thank you for the upsell, Mr. Will Horton. I'm glad you found my videos helpful to you. And I hope the rest of you have too. Let us now talk briefly about sales patterns and Cyber Monday. Guys, I would like to know how your sales were from the period Black Friday through Cyber Monday and beyond. For years, all internet online platforms, whether it's eBay, Amazon, Etsy, whatever, they hype Cyber Monday. Years passed, until this year, years passed, my Cyber Monday sales were always either right at par or slightly above. Right at par or slightly above. No earth-shattering sales on Cyber Monday. So this year, Black Friday for me was good, okay? Better than I expected, both on eBay and with walk-ins. So I would say Black Friday was a win. Saturday was something called Small Business Saturday. Most of you guys probably don't have any interaction with that if you're not actually in brick and mortar stores, but that's something American Express started about maybe 10 years ago. And you know, it never really took off. A lot of people try and promote it, but it just never really took off. Small Business Saturday was very bad for me on both ends, on eBay and locally. Now locally, I can understand why, because we had a tremendous rainstorm all day Saturday. I mean, there was like nobody on the road. It was terrible. On eBay, I think I made two sales, which is way below normal for me. Sunday, again, below normal on eBay. I think I had one sale. Yes, I had one sale on eBay. My one sale on Sunday was approximately Let's just say 12 o'clock noon, all right? So now all of Sunday and Sunday night, nothing, which is highly unusual for me, okay? That never happens. I get up Monday morning, nothing, okay? I wait till about two o'clock in the afternoon, nothing. Now I know something's not right, okay? This ain't right, okay? 
I did a couple of things. The first thing I did was I did an immediate store reset where I reset all of my over 1300 items. Second thing I did was I examined my sales, my markdown manager sales. I thought that I had about 80 to 90 percent of my items on sale, but that was not the case. I only had about 40 percent of my items on sale because through attrition I've been losing a lot of items. What I mean is, let's say I start a sale of Markdown Manager 10% off, and let's say I have 400 items in that sale. The sale runs for two weeks, some items sell. I renew the same sale, but now the same sale has less items than when I first started it because I sold some. And over the course of two or three months, this has been happening. So now I didn't realize how many sales I lost through attrition. So I had to start, I think, two or three new campaigns. That was on Monday, Cyber Monday. I did that. Bang, immediately a sale comes in, but only one sale. Then Tuesday, things started getting better again. Sales got back to normal, you know, four or five per day, which is what I really like to see, at least four or five per day. So that seems to have rectified itself. So basically what I'm telling you guys for me was Cyber Monday was a bust. Ah, thumbs down. I'd like to know how it was for you guys. And with that, I'm going to bring this video to a close because I've gone long again. And I apologize guys, but I have all this information I want to try and impart to you. So sorry that it took a little longer than usual. Rehash time. Number one. In the comment section, please address, in your opinion, what age group do you think buys the most from your eBay store? And would you like to see eBay targeting that group, assuming that group is not millennials? Number two, how were your Cyber Monday sales? I want to hear about that. And if you also want to talk about the sales in general, that's great too. Number three. Let's stop and have a drink number two from the Fox News Cup of Life. Very good. So yeah, guys, that's about it. I'll wrap up by telling you a couple of things. I'm Crazy New York Driver, and you're not. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and enjoyable. If you did, please leave me a thumbs up because it tells me that I am appreciated and I'm doing a good job. If you didn't find it helpful, please tell me in the comment section what you want me to address next week and I'll be more than happy to do it. Remember guys, I am a seller friend, not a seller critic or skeptic of any kind. I'm still making money online and I've solved a lot of problems. <laughs> I hope you all make a ton of eBay sales this week. You know what you got to do now? I want you to rock on and peace! Yeah! <laughs> I love it!